Dear friends, as our peace gong calls us together on this holy day, you're invited to have your bread and juice ready for communion later in our service and light a candle to create your own worship space. And let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship our God. Grace to you and peace. We come into God's presence in community and communion with one another. And indeed, the invitation is ours this day to prepare the way of the Lord. Welcome to all of you on this second Sunday in the Advent season as we join now in our call to worship. With joyful hearts, we come to prepare the way. With searching hearts, we listen for promises of the past and calls from the future. The prophet declares, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. The voice from the wilderness sends forth these words. Today we affirm them anew. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Our hearts are open and our songs are inviting. The time is now as we anticipate Emmanuel, God with us. Let us sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let us pray together. O God of the promise, come now and dwell within us and among us. You alone know the depth of our longings and our need for your presence. We confess, O God, that we have sinned against you in word and deed, by abandoning hope, by growing complacent or cynical, by failing to trust in your promises. Forgive us, we pray, for all our unfaithfulness. Confront us anew with the amazing way in which your power surrounds us and challenges us to love. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who is the bringer of peace. Amen. Friends, we have the assurance that the one who reveals the way is coming, yet is very much present this day among us all. Even in our broken places, in our separations from ourselves, from one another, from our creation and from God, 
Still, we are given the promise that nothing in all creation can ever separate us from the love of God made known to us through Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God for the gift and the promise for which we sing glory to God in the highest. We sing glory to God in the highest as our response of praise because we are God's people, God's people of faith gathered to prepare for Christ's birth. And we are grateful for one another for being here this day. In this joyful and meaningful season, we come to prepare our hearts and minds. We come also to prepare our place of worship for the great event that is anticipated. The church calendar time says this is Advent, which means this is the coming season when the Christ child arrives. The traditions and the symbols that we use to prepare will expand our understandings of the deeper truths and the special meanings of Christmas. Today we prepare the way with these outer signs and the Inman family will be bringing forth the symbols of our celebration. Christ is the living center of our faith, and the Christ candle signifies life when it is placed in the center of our altar. Christ is the center of our life, and so this is placed in the eternal circle of an Advent wreath, and the Christ candle will be lighted again on Christmas Eve when new life is born into our midst. The Advent wreath helps us prepare the way by reminding us that a circle of unending love and faithfulness is God's gift to us. The four candles represent the four Sundays during Advent, and each candle symbolizes the vision of God for us as we are called to bring hope, peace, joy, and love into our world. The purple candles remind us of two meanings, for purple is the color of penitence, calling us during these days of preparation to look at ourselves and seek God's forgiveness for any wrong that we've done. Purple is also the color of royalty, reminding us that Jesus is the one who is to rule within our hearts. The pink candle is the candle of joy to remind us to laugh and rejoice in the possibilities and the promises of life. And by lighting a new candle each week, we anticipate the time when Christ will come once again. Today is the second Sunday in Advent, and we give thanks for our unique Advent wreath placed on the brass holder made from shells of war. And with the Christ candle centered in the wreath, we now light the first candle, the candle of hope. Remembering that God brings hope to our world and shows us the way through Jesus Christ. And today we light the second candle, the candle of peace, honoring the bringer of peace, Jesus Christ, who calls each of us to be peacemakers in our lives and in our world. Peace and hope. May we sing together our response. Shall 
The Christmas flower is called the poinsettia, named for the United States diplomat, Dr. Joel Poinsett, who served in Mexico way back in 1825. Dr. Poinsett was also a botanist, and so he introduced the poinsettia to this country. There are legends that go with this flower, and our favorite one says that a little peasant girl was standing by the doors of the church, sadly watching all the people leave beautiful gifts at the statue of the baby Jesus. She was sad because she had nothing to give. And finally, she picked a big bunch of green-leafed plants that grew beside the road. The people were very cruel and they laughed out loud to see a little girl in her tattered clothes taking a bunch of weeds as her offering. She was so very ashamed and her face was reddened then, so did the plants. The leaves turned into beautiful flowers. The people were amazed at the miracle and remembered how Jesus said that God loves all the people, rich or poor. And they were very sorry they had laughed at this offering of love brought by that little peasant girl. The plant's star-shaped formation of red leaves reminds us of the star that came to shine over Bethlehem on that holy night of our Savior's birth, a star that led many to this place of hope and peace. Let us all sing, What Can I Offer? The symbol of the Christmas rose is a symbol of Jesus' birth. It's a reminder of the beauty and the enduring strength which we see in Jesus Christ. And so it is that the Christmas rose has been lifted up in song for many centuries. And even now, as we hear the music of Lo, How a Rose, The Christmas greens had their origin in pagan cultures, but their use was adapted by Christians who saw the deeper meaning in them and connected them with their faith. 
the rosemary that is used as an herb today is said to be named after Mary, the mother of Jesus. And in medieval times, it was customary to pl place rosemary on the altar at Christmas time. Other greens also have deeper meanings. The laurel and the bay leaves symbolize victory and triumph. The yew and the cypress can point to eternal life. Mistletoe symbolizes peace. The ivy is a sign of everlasting life. And Christians can also be aware that the prickly leaves and red berries of holly are symbols of the crown of thorns and the sacrifice which Christ endured on Calvary. Because the Christ child is coming, yet is eternal, we remember that the infant lived and ultimately died for love and continues to live even now. May the holly and the ivy remind us of the Christ who was and is and is to be. crash that gave shelter to the animals also gave birth to the Christ child. On this day, the manger scene will come forward as we remember that love is born in our hearts and calls us to reach out and give life to all who are in need. This particular carving is from Haiti, reminding us of our partnership with those in that place who are Christians and find hope even in the midst of unrelenting poverty and disease and devastation. And for us to be faithful followers of this one called Jesus, we must share from the blessings of our lives with others. Let us all sing one verse of Away in a Manger. In this season, we see lights all around us, on the city street posts and in the church windows, on the lawns and in houses and stores and offices. Lights are symbolic of God sending this incredible light of love to guide us in the form of a tiny baby. And so it is that we decorate with lights to remember the meaning of the night when Jesus was born. We also place lights on our trees. And although the Christmas tree legends are many, some believe that the Christmas tree was first used when Martin Luther, way back in the Middle Ages, wandered outside on Christmas Eve. He marveled at the wonder and beauty of the starry sky above and the snow-blanketed hillside beneath. The moon shone on the sparkling fir tree nearby, which he carefully cut and lovingly gathered in his arms and carried into his house. He set it up for his children and decorated it with candles to look like the stars in the beautiful heavens. His hope was that the tree would help all the members of the family feel and remember the mystery and the sacred beauty of that Christmas night when Jesus was born. Today we give thanks for this tree. Sparkling now with the sacred beauty in this holy place. 
and we give thanks for all of the hands that have placed a tree here in our sanctuary this year and every year. May the green remind us of God's unchanging love and the candles remind us of stars singing eternally in the heavens. Let us all join in singing, O Christmas tree, O Christmas tree, you have a wondrous message. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, you have a wondrous message. Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, you have a wondrous message. For you proclaim. Jonathan Ryder will share our scripture for this day, which is taken from the Gospel of Luke and offered in the first person by the cousin of Jesus, whose name was, is, John the Baptist. I, John, son of Zechariah, bring you the word on this Sabbath day here in the wilderness. I come to proclaim that this is the time to turn yourselves around. Get yourself tuned in to God's vision, and while you're at it, ask forgiveness for all the ways that you have failed to listen to God's way for your life, and remember the message from the prophet Isaiah who wrote these words. Prepare the way, make straight the paths, every valley shall be filled and every mountain shall be made low. The crooked shall be made straight and the rough places made smooth, and all flesh so see the saving power of God. Turn yourselves around and smooth out those rough places. Fill up those valleys. Live as God's people, bearing the good news in all that you say and do. This is the word of God for today. Thanks be to God. Prepare yourself before God. John the Baptist shouts those words. And I was struggling even more than usual with this scripture and even wondering this Advent especially if this text about turning around and repenting is even necessary in this year 2020. I mean, really? We need this John the Baptist to tell us to turn around as if we haven't been turned around enough, thank you very much. Certainly, we've been challenged these past 10 months to examine our lives and forced to focus on priorities and attempt to declutter our lives. We've been working at filling those valleys and leveling the mountains of way too much news every day that reminds us of death and disease, statistics, reality, the economy, millions unemployed, underpaid, unprotected, and the injustices and the greed and the poverty and the politics and examining what really is most important, right? Really? Do we need John the Baptist shouting at us? But... This is the Advent scripture reading prescribed for today. So it is, once again, that I'm still compelled by faith and conscience to remind us that we cannot come to the manger at Christmas without first encountering this strange character in the Bible. John, cousin of Jesus, definitely a hallmark reject, who is rudely intruding on beauty of this hanging of the greens worship. And I often recall the claim someone made that John the Baptist is God's Brillo or SOS steel wool pad, scrubbing away layers of ourselves to make us even more sensitive to the coming of the light of Christ into our world, and even more prepared in our hearts to be ready to receive the holy in our midst. All right, that sounds reasonable. And today is the day that points us in the true direction of why we celebrate 
the anticipation of the holy coming into our midst. So yes, Advent is supposed to be the time to prepare our hearts and our minds, meaning that we dare to examine ourselves before God as we really are. As Barbara Brown Taylor wrote, it's about stepping into the light or having the light turned upon us so that every nook and cranny of our being is illuminated for examination. It's about standing before God without our armor, our masks, our possessions, our excuses, with nothing but our beating hearts and the slim volume of our life histories to commend us, waiting to hear God's true world, word about ourselves. So this Advent, as we wait, we take courage. We look inside ourselves. We examine all that is within us that keeps us from receiving this hope-filled vision of God into our hearts. We will dare to ask, is there any bitterness or anger or resentment or despair within us? Is there selfishness or greed, negativity or complaints? So perhaps it is even more important in these 2020 days for us to take the time to examine the meaning of Advent for our lives, especially in this unforgettably complicated and challenging year and examine the ways that we might even be more faithful in our preparing for the true meaning of Christmas and Christ's coming. How do we prepare for the real meaning of this season? Sharing is the essence of preparing the way. One of the most thought-provoking cartoons ever penned was created by Charles Schultz many years ago. The dog Snoopy is shivering out in a snowstorm beside an empty food dish he was looking longingly, expectantly toward the house. Lucy came out, raised up her hand and said, go in peace, be warm and filled. And then she turned and went back in the house and slammed the door. In the last frame, you saw a very confused Snoopy looking toward the house, shivering and hungry and utterly baffled, saying yes to prepare the way and make known the hope, peace, joy, and love of Christ it takes more than words. It takes action. It brings results and involves a certain amount of sacrifice in our sharing. Lucy didn't share anything with poor shivering Snoopy. She did not have to sacrifice any of her time, her money, her space, her heart, her feelings, or her needs in order to make that speech, to make the love of Christ known genuinely, to proclaim that love to the world truthfully, means we assimilate that love into our very being and find the meaning of this Advent season. There are so many little ways that keep the reason for the season in our hearts. I know that many of you have an Advent wreath at home or you create one with four candles and light one each Sunday. And with all the lights on the trees and mantles in the windows, we remember why it is, because Jesus is the light of the world. With each Christmas card we send, it's an act of sharing ourselves with others. And consider adding a note specific to that person and what they mean to us in our life. One family I know receives cards and places them at the dinner table to provide a focus for sharing about that particular person who sent the card and the joy that they had offered to the family's life. Prepare the way unpacking the decorations, perhaps take time to consider the meaning of each one, where it came from, who gave it, if it's symbolic of Christ's coming, or does it contain goodwill or fun or laughter? Do we recall that every decoration shaped like a circle represents the unending circle of God's love? And that includes all the wreaths. Prepare the way with a Christmas tree and perhaps reflect on your own ancestral family tree and then Consider the family tree of Jesus, those very human women and men who gave us insights into our own humanness, the stories of how Mary rejoiced in God and Joseph listened to his dreams and the Magi worshipped and bowed down and the shepherds left their fields and followed a star, taking a risk, preparing the way. Prepare the way with angels. Many have added your names to the angel tree at Slater Park that Tammy Ramos made available in memory of her parents. And we pause and give thanks for the angels in our lives who are now with God. Prepare the way 
as we connect with others by phone or Zoom or notes, and we honor them as gifts. Prepare the way as we ask, can we center our gift giving on those who are hungry or in need and less for ourselves? Many of you providing food for the baskets and gift certificates for the angel tree. So we prepare the way, each smile, each kind word, each thank you, each grocery certificate, each store voucher, each warm coat, each weekly pledge to the church, each angel, each invitation to a friend to watch the virtual worship, each expression of welcome, each act of peace. Yes, we are preparing the way. We hear voices crying in the wilderness places and seek to respond wherever there is a need. Our call is to be aware of what is going on in our culture and society, to keep praying and keep asking, how can I make a difference in the name of the one for whom we are preparing? How can I be God's extravagantly welcoming love and peace for others? And today in this holy place set apart from the world yet very much connected, take another look around and find God in the beauty of the sanctuary, the wreath, the lights, the flowers, the tree, the music, the rose as a symbol of Christ's coming. Take a look inside of our heart, mind, and soul, and give thanks for the hope and peace that are possible through the promise and the power of God's love calling us to find the courage and to offer our hopes and fears, our joys and our tears, our hearts and our gifts to honor the coming of the Holy One who is the center of our faith and the light of love. Amen. Let us sing together, lift up your heads. as we offer our prayers during our time of sharing the cup and bread in our communion time, please keep in prayers all of those who are named in the email messages that Donna updates several times during the week. There are many who need the strength of our prayers and our notes. We pray for all who are suffering in any way. And we continue to pray for our United Church of Christ conference, our country, our world, our environment, and our mission concerns and many others who live in other parts of the world. Donna Yule will now share our faith community concerns. Good morning or afternoon or evening, whenever you are watching, welcome. And we are so happy to have you with us today. We are a faith community that lives out our faith through all that we do. And we especially want you to know that your health Safety and staying connected are our highest priority. The Mission and Social Action Committee set up a GoFundMe page for Fred Gauthier, our translator from Haiti, who is in desperate need of funds. You can check out our Facebook page and there is a link to be able to contribute. And we are collecting food for Christmas baskets for UCAP. This is something we do every year. There will be two bins set up outside for you to drop food off. One is right outside the office, and the other is near the porch door outside off the County Street parking lot. And since it is Christmas season, it is time for the angel tree. And yes, because of COVID, we are doing it a little bit different this year. Since many of us are not going into stores, we are asking for gift certificates for our needy families. And you can get them at any grocery store. For example, we can, you can get one for Target or Walmart or Kohl's or an Amazon gift card. Denominations of $20 or $25 would be suggested. You can drop them off at the office or you can always contact me or Kristen and we will make arrangements to get them from you. 
And thank you to those that are continuing to either mail in or uh, their weekly pledge or give online. We are forever grateful for that. Please enjoy your week. Be safe, wear your mask when you go out to stores and restaurants and offices, and especially during this holiday season, please reach out to others. I hope that you are in good health and good spirits, and I will see you again next week. Let us gather our hearts in the spirit of prayer. Most holy God of all the ages past and hope for the time to come, Hear our prayers that rise up from the depths of our being. Be with all, all who seek your courage in the midst of loss, in the midst of doubts or despair. Be with all who share laughter and love and gratitude for life. Be with us in our naming of all those in our own hearts and minds, all for whom we are truly thankful, all for whom we hold close in spirit, we pray, O oh God, that you'll give us the vision and the will to name all of our gratitude and all for which we can be thankful. Most holy God of justice and integrity, truth and beauty, we continue to pray for the depth of your vision to heal our country into the light you intend and be with those unable to rejoice in diversity, those who see each gift of your creation as unique and special, be with all who set, strive to make a difference and empower wholeness. And we pray, O oh God, that you'll fill us with the promise that you are indeed ever-present, guiding us with the power to be filled with your call to compassion and serve as followers whose gratitude radiates goodness and joyful response to all of life. And we ask now, O oh God, that you will bless this cup and this bread and each of us receiving in the holy name of Jesus Christ who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Dear friends, we remember on that night when Jesus was betrayed that he took the bread and giving thanks, blessed it and broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this always remembering me. And in the same manner also, Jesus took the cup and giving thanks, blessed it, and said, This cup is the cup of the new covenant, which is the covenant of love. Do this also, remembering me. Ministering now in Christ's name, I invite all who live and love in that holy name to share the bread and the cup. And while you are partaking, hear now this music for this Advent season. Let us pray. Life-giving and loving God, we give thanks that you have nourished us at this your table, and we pray that you will continue to guide us in Christ's love through the days ahead. Amen. And let us sing, Come, O Long-Expected Jesus. Release us, grant. 
let us offer our words of parting together. We angels and mortals, believers and skeptics, look heavenward and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at our world and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at each other, then into ourselves, and we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, peace, my brother, peace, my sister, peace, my soul. Let us hear now, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now may the peace of Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us as we go forth to love and to serve. Amen.